my luxurious fleet. I want to go over another news update. There's always going to be new Lexus news uh, in this day and age. <clears throat> so I want, to, I want to probably do this more on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis. Um, my reviews are going to slow down for a couple of reasons. Winter is coming. Um, no joke, it snowed last night uh, and yesterday. So we still have some snow on the ground in mid-October, which is a little crazy. Um, and there's just not, I mean, yeah, 2019 models are coming out, but there's not a whole lot of new things hitting our lots right now. Uh, the next video review I'll do is probably going to be on the ES300H, which that could be as soon as uh, about, a, I guess, this week, if I can get my hands on one of our service loaners so that's a hybrid 2019, or it could be as late as, gosh, December at this point. So let's just get into this first article here. Why the 2019 Lexus 350L, or 350 for that, for that matter, it's the same car, doesn't use a touchscreen and why that's a good thing. Well, I feel like this, this article is just, um, I feel like it's wrong. I'll just say that. I haven't told, I haven't told you guys this, but most people who get into Lexus or if they're coming from an older Lexus, let's say an early uh, 2010s, there's touchscreens in those cars, and they work really well. Lexus doesn't want touchscreens in the cars as they want people to be focused on the road. This article is saying, well, Lexus is really looking forward because, you know, these cars are going to be autonomous in the future, and you're probably not going to even need a touchscreen. That's kind of what it's saying. I don't really agree with that. I think people really, really like their touchscreens and everything we use, our phones, are touchscreens. If you use a tablet, it's a touchscreen. Now my computer is not, and that's fine. But I feel like a touchscreen is the way to go in mer for most vehicles. Um, you're welcome to look at the rest of this article at Tech Radar, but I don't really agree with them and they're kind of, I don't know if this, this could have been like a secret article um, sponsored by Lexus to be like, oh yeah, the 350L, we need to boost sales because this car is not selling very well. The third row is unusable, so maybe they're just like, oh yeah, you, you really don't need the, the touch screen. Um, the touchpad is, is an amazing forward leap in, you know, technology. I really disagree with that, uh, but let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. <clears throat> This is a fascinating article, um, especially to me because this car got discontinued in 2017. So Lexus releases new sneakers inspired by the CT200H. I thought this article was like three years old when I read it, but it says it came out like three, four days ago. So, I mean, they're cool looking shoes, I guess. They're decent shoes and it looks like it's leather right in through here and kind of like a felt material. You got this two-tone, obviously, your black and your red, and you see the CT in the back. So it might be dead in the U.S., but it's still alive and well in Europe. It's now getting into the shoe business since it has unveiled a new line of sneakers that are inspired by the CT200H F-Sport by Walsh. He might be a big deal over there in uh, the U.K., but I don't know anything about him. I know, uh, you know, shoe cobblers are, are kind of a big deal over there in Great Britain, but shoe manufacturer Walsh. If you guys are in the UK, let me know what you think of Walsh. I've never heard of it before being in the States. Oh, of course, the unisex sneakers, right? Of course they are, gosh. Are wrapped in bright red perforated leather and black suede with contrast red stitching that recalls the look of the red and black interior option for the CT200H F Sport. What gets me, well, okay, of course you have the Lexus tab here. What gets me is these are 165 pounds, which is probably close to about 200 US dollars. Um, no thank you. And they even have a video of it, which you guys are welcome to watch. Um, but let's go in the next article. This is probably the most perplexing article I have today for you guys. So, Mysterious Lexus LFA wide-body test mule spied lapping the Nürburgring. What is going on? 
Are they going to make a new LFA? I doubt it. You know, the LC, my guess is that they're testing the tires for the LCF. That's my guess. They're testing tires and wheel combinations for the LCF um, that has been announced, but we have no details other than that. My guess is that they may have, you know, created this wide body kit to more accurately mimic the LCF. That is my guess. I don't know if this article goes into that for sure. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. They, they have two sets of wheels here. You can see these, I don't know what you'd call them, these darker wheels here. And then down below, they switched them out with these larger wheels um, with less spokes on them. So very, very interesting. Um, my guess again is that they are uh, ramping up testing for the LCF. Um, stay tuned for more news on that. Hopefully we get it at the uh, Tokyo Auto Show coming up at the end of the month, which is just a couple weeks away. Checking out the Lexus Twitter page. So again, <clears throat> the, the 2019 RC is redesigned, well, refreshed as you guys know, not really redesigned. It's made its way into its first custom shop. So if you guys saw it's going from Miami all the way to LA and making some stops along the way uh, to receive some custom tuning or maybe custom artwork on this car. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens by the time it gets to LA and what they'll do on the West Coast. Um, but they have full media coverage of this blank slate um, RC350 F Sport. Uh, not really any other news other than that as I'm scrolling down. Okay, next article. Lexus minivan is apparently only a matter of time. I've been talking about this, at least with myself and, yes, I talked to myself, and other coworkers, how we lose a lot of customers that need a lot of space. If you want a lot of space with a Lexus, you have to spend nearly $90,000, depending on the build, for an LX 570, which is our biggest SUV. It's one of my favorite Lexus vehicles. But if you want a luxury people hauler or luxury, um, you know, just a very versatile, spacious, spacious vehicle, you have to get the LX. And that's just not, that just doesn't make sense, in my opinion. For me, so let's say I, you know, middle class, there's nothing wrong with wanting a luxury vehicle. But if your only option is a 90 some thousand dollar vehicle, it makes you look at maybe the Honda, or sorry, Acura MDX, or the Infiniti QX80, which is probably around 60 grand. So Lexus minivan is something I've always talked about. The Sienna is a great vehicle, um, but this isn't going to be based off the Sienna. This is going to be based off of a van we don't get here in the States. Um, so it's only a matter of time, Rodriguez told the auto industry, as a luxury automaker, blah, 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 Lexus does not want to be left behind. So th there's this van that's called a Toyota Alphard. It's more, it's more similar to the huge boxy vans that were popular in the 80s and 90s here in America. Um, I wonder if there's a picture of it. No, I don't have a picture of it. Okay, I'm just gonna Google it real quick. Toyota Alphard. So here we go. Let's just look at this. I mean, it's hideous, absolutely hideous. But how cool would it be if Lexus made it look a lot better um, and yeah, and gosh, just look at that. Look at that. The seat meets you at the door. That's just, that's ridiculous. Um, so look at this luxury too. I mean, this screams Lexus to me. Look at the wood on the doors, the quality of the seats. That is a luxury. This is a luxury people mover through and through. I think Lexus needs to have something like this. Now, what would it cost? I have no idea. It might be closer to 70 thousand if they made something like this in the states but gosh guys 
Look at this. Look at that. Well, but here's a better view. That's just amazing. Um, so we'll see. You know, they say it's only going to be in certain markets, probably. I mean, look at this. Minivan segment doesn't have as much strength as it did in the past due to crossovers become the vehicle choice of hauling families. But you know what? Our crossovers aren't big enough. The RX 350L is a failed attempt to make a car big enough. The GX is outdated. People my age who have large and growing families, I like how the GX rides, but I don't really like the rest of it. It's antiquated. If I could get a badass minivan that was full of luxury, looks like they're probably only going to make it for certain markets, the U.S. not being one of them because they say the market's not there. I dare you. I dare you, Lexus, to make this vehicle and see what happens. It could flop, but man, how cool would that be? Anyways, this is an article that's, well, this vehicle's been announced a long, long time ago, probably uh, about a year ago, to be honest. Um... The LQ though, so this is a LF1 limitless concept, which is which has the green light to make it to production. Okay, so this is the ultimate ultra luxury SUV crossover that Lexus doesn't have right now. In some markets, you can get the LX570 MBS Super Sport, like in Saudi Arabia, for example. This vehicle, the LQ which could be this vehicle. We don't really know what the LQ means. Um, if, it, if, if this LF1 is the LQ, I don't know what Q stands for. My guess would be maybe quantum as in a quantum leap of technology and uh, refinement and luxury and power. I don't know. But I always wanted to talk about this vehicle because it's one of the most... Uh, forward-thinking vehicles Lexus has has come up with in recent history okay um, the whole cabin is something from it looks like from Star Trek it's very very hollow deck ish uh, it's just un unbelievable and it's going to be make it to production but we don't know exactly what it's going to look like uh, I think it's going to look very similar to this I don't expect it to come standard with the 22 inch wheels though um, the grill will look similar and I think these lights will look similar these taillights are, will be very very similar if not identical based off of the UX's taillights but I just want to go over that um, this vehicle we may hear more about it at the <coughs> auto show in Tokyo coming up at the end of the month but that sums it up guys uh, a whole lot of things to go over um, probably the most exciting one for me uh, is LFA wide body kit testing wheels and tires for the LCF and possibly the Lexus minivan uh, that we hopefully can get our hands on. But all right, guys, uh, have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I, uh, for your guys' sake and mine too, I really hope it's going to be the ES300H hybrid. And I'll give you my guys my impressions on it. Uh, I know it's a great vehicle. I've driven it before uh, during training. Uh, and it, it is one of my favorite Lexus vehicles. I'll just say that. I'll see you guys in the next video.